Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon John 8, 31-59 Verse 31 Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. For there were many, in Christ's day, coming to him for a while and then going away from him, professing to believe and then stumbling when Christ proclaimed some doctrine of God which struck them as being strange and hard to receive. Our Lord Jesus tells them that constancy is necessary to true discipleship. It is of no use to start running in the race unless we continue in the course till the prize is won. We are not true pilgrims to heaven merely because we cross the threshold of our door, we must keep on, and on, and on till we reach the golden streets of the new Jerusalem. 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That is the result of being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. With Christ, who is the truth of God, to be our teacher, and the Holy Spirit to bless his words, we come to know the truth, and the operation of the truth upon the heart is to deliver us from the bondage of sin and of error. 33. They answered him, We are Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How can you say, You shall be made free? What a lie this was! They were at that very time in bondage to the Romans. They had been subdued and conquered, and, a little while after, they, themselves, confessed that they had no king but Caesar. Men are not very selective about telling lies when they wish to resist Christ, they will do anything rather than believe on him. 34. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whoever commits sin is the servant of sin. The man who habitually lives in sin is not a free man, for he is still a slave to sin. If he finds pleasure and delight in disobeying God, he has no right to talk about being a free man. His chains are rattling on his wrists. What can he know about freedom? 35. And the servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abides always. A servant may be dismissed from the household, but a son may not. If we were only servants of God, we might fall from grace and perish. But if we are the sons of God, we never shall. If we ever did, in truth, call God, Father, we shall always be able to use that blessed title, for the relationship of fatherhood is not a temporary one and cannot come to an end. 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free, indeed. If you have the freedom of sonship, you are free, indeed. There are none so free in our father's house as his children. 37 to 39. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. The real descendants of the father of the faithful are, themselves, faithful, that is, believers. The father of believers has believers for his children. If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Our Lord had admitted that these Jews were Abraham's seed according to the flesh but he proved that they were not Abraham's seed in the higher and spiritual sense, since they were not like he whom they claimed for a father. 40, 41. But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. 
he had not told them who that far there was, but as it is a standing rule that men do the deeds of their father, the genuineness of the descent which they claimed could be tested by their likeness to their father. 41, 42. Then said they to him, We are not born of fornication, we have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. Any man who is born of God must love Jesus Christ. The purity of his motives, the loveliness of his character, the charms of his person would all be sure to win the heart of a man who was truly born of God. 42, 43. For I proceeded forth and came from God neither came I of myself but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. You are dull of comprehension. You are hardened in heart. You are proud in spirit. You are just the opposite of everything that is good and, therefore, you cannot hear my word, said Christ and this is proof positive that you do not love God and that you are not the children of God. 44. You are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. Remember from whose lips these words fell, even from the lips of the gentle Jesus. Honest speech is the surest token of a loving heart, but, nowadays, if a man preaches the truth of God plainly and faithfully, men say that he is hard and unkind. But if a man glosses over the truth of God and alters it according to his own idea of what will please men, then they say, he is a kindly disposed and large-hearted man. I would be disposed to doubt whether he has any heart at all if he will sooner see sinners damn than offend them by proclaiming the truth. I thank God that some of us care little about offending those who offend God. If men will not yield themselves to the Lord, we want not their friendship, but we will strive to make them uneasy in their rebellion, and if they resolve to be lost, we will at least be clear of their blood. 44. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. Falsehood is his natural element. When Satan deceives, he only acts according to his nature which is blackened through and through with lies. 45, 46 and because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convicts me of sin? What a grand challenge! None of us can speak like that except in a very modified sense, but Christ, standing before his enemies, who gnashed their teeth at him and would have given their eyes to be able to fix some fault upon him, boldly says to them, Which of you convicts me of sin? 46 to 51. And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God hears God's words, you, therefore, hear them not, because you are not of God. Then answered the Jews, and said unto him, Say we not well that you are a Samaritan, and have a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. And I seek not my own glory, there is one who seeks and judges. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if anyone keeps my sayings, he shall never see death. This statement quite staggered them. Yet it is true. To believers, it is not death to die. They simply pass out of this world into a larger and yet more glorious life. They descend not to death, but they rise to immortality. 52, 53 Then said the Jews to him, Now we know that you have a devil. Abraham is dead and the prophets, 
and you say, If anyone keeps my sayings, he shall never taste of death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead? And the prophets are dead. Who do you make yourself out to be? Apostrophe Who do you make yourself out to be? Someone greater than Abraham and the prophets. 5456 Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing, it is my Father that honors me, of whom you say, that he is our God, yet you have not known him, but I know him, and if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar like you, but I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham, as you call him. 56, 57. Rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? They allowed a wide margin in speaking of our Saviour's age, for he was only thirty-three years old. It may be true that the sorrows of his life had so marred his countenance that he looked more like a man of fifty than one of thirty-three. I cannot tell, nor do I know whether that is what they meant. But it is amazing that they should have said to him, You are not yet fifty years old. 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. They had asked him, Who do you make yourself out to be? And now they have his answer. Before Abraham was, I am, said Christ. It is the very name by which God revealed himself to Moses at the burning bush, I am. Yet Jesus takes this title to himself. Before Abraham was, not, I was. Notice that. But, I am, as if his life was one continued present existence as indeed it is, for with God there is no past or future, but all things are ever present to his infinite mind. When Jesus said, Before Abraham was, I am, he claimed the Godhead, he declared that he was certainly God, self-existent from all eternity. 59. Then took they up stones to cast at him. They counted him a blasphemer and so he was if he was not all he claimed to be. I have heard of some who reverence Christ, but do not believe him to be God, but how can that be? He evidently made himself out to be God and this was the great charge the Jews brought against him. For this, indeed, they put him to death, because he made himself equal with God. If he were not equal with God, if he were not really God, he led men to think that he was. And if this were false, it was a great sin not consistent with the holy character of Christ. If he was not God, he was the grossest impostor who ever visited this world. But he is God and nothing less. Yet because he claimed this, the Jews took up stones to cast at him. 59. But Jesus hid himself, and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Glory be to his holy name forever and ever.